good morning children in the previous chapter we learned about cloud service that is infrastructure as a service and platform as a service and many others we learned around seven types of services okay today we are going to learn about cloud deploying models what models are required for these services okay let me share the screen with you yeah in your this chapter you had learned about cloud services and the types of computing and in this you learned about the different cloud services that you have infrastructure platform as a service software as a service data as a service right children and uh, you learned that uh, how uh, developers uh, need these services to develop their applications and uh, now we are going to learn the models to develop uh, these developers require to develop these applications so this would be your a chapter deploy deployment of models and in this chapter we are going to learn the different cloud deployment models the models that are uh, there in the uh, cloud uh, computing the services here you have um, public you have different types of models here cloud uh, models and the first one is called public cloud model um you have private cloud model community cloud model hybrid cloud model these are the things that you have in your textbook i'll also be teaching about a uh, grid uh, computing model and um, cluster computing model because these also are important i'll be including this in the chapter and teaching you let's learn each of them separately what model would you choose for your uh, work coming to the first model which is called as public cloud model in this type of model the service that this model has is they provide you with the storage the uh, computation services and this is used for the general public and it is done over the internet you can, you need the internet to access all these services so the cloud uh, service deployment uh, model here it uses the provision of storage and computation services okay it's for the general public and it is used over the internet and what are the resources that they would provide like they have to provide some resources that you require you get storage uh, capabilities that is whatever you want to store you can store over the cloud how much ever storage you require because your computer cannot you learned previously that you cannot have uh, so much of storage in your uh, system that's why you had to use the virtual machines right so here they giving you some resources that are provided as storage capabilities applications you learned also how these infrastructures and software as a platform how they uh, help you to create your own own application and the virtual machines um, the virtual machines what they did is they had uh, give you given you the components to use like the mouse the ram and all these things you are able to use it uh, virtually without having them in uh, with you if not your uh, company would overflow with many machines so this all are used virtually so cloud allows you for scalability what's the meaning of scalability it means that whatever things that you are using according to that you are going to pay it means pay as you go so this is a scale scalability and also you have resource sharing because if it is one uh, single person doing all the work it wouldn't be possible so the organization shares all the resources to develop their applications and uh, you know advance in their uh, whatever things they are creating so it facilitates access to it resources and so here you have the pay as you go billing model that is whatever services you are using whatever resources that you are using you are only going to pay for that resources and for that services and you are not going to um, and if you need it for a certain amount of time you will pay it only for that uh, time that you use and suppose you want to uh, you know remove any uh, types of access any other type of uh, things some things that you have finished some um, services that they're giving you didn't you don't need them you can just stop using them and need not pay for them so as long as you use according to how much you use you are going to pay for it like your electricity bill how much uh, power you use you're going to only pay for that much so it's like that how much you access you're going to pay only for that and it's very low so <clears throat> a service provider manages now what what does a service provider do he manages all the things 
that is your public cloud solutions that that is the infrastructure the software and other back end architectures all maintained uh, by them because it's a multi tenant environment multi tenant environment means one person is not using uh, the uh, you know services it is all grouped together you are being grouped and you are using the same uh, you know storage place you are using uh, the same uh, provisions that are uh, given to other uh, are the same computation services that are being uh, given or there are man, many organizations that are uh, you know along with you the reason why they keep them along with you i mean why do they access such type of uh, system is so that the um, something that you are developing would be more easier you can uh, share your resources and check on another person's how he is developing uh, the things and so this is like a shared uh, uh, you know environment that's why it's called a multi it's a multi tenant uh, environment okay now let's see cloud computing what is public cloud computing and where who are these vendors and from uh, and what benefits do they give you some of the cloud computing uh, service uh, people or the vendors are amazon ec2 ec2 stands for elastic compute cloud so amazon is one of the people uh, the companies that provide you this public cloud uh, computing another one is microsoft azure and these two companies have a lot of benefits let's see what are the benefits first benefit is utility model what do you mean by utility model means you are going to pay only for the hours that you are using the resources their resources so it's called as pay as you go pay as you go model means pay for by the hour for the resources that you are using the next one is no contract so suppose you are using the pay as you go that is on the hourly basis suppose if you shut down your server uh, that is after 2 hours then you don't need a contract actually a contract is not required for your own use for the so you just use it and then you shut down and automatically you are disconnected uh, from their services and you don't have to pay after that dear children the next one is share hardware as i told you here what happens is because it is a multi tenant environment the public cloud is what is it defined it's defined as a the public cloud is basically called a multi tenant environment because your server is being shared you have the same uh, shared by all the other people who are accessing uh, the public cloud and so there is you have the same hardware you have the same uh, storage slot and the network devices so uh, of the, uh, like the other tenants uh, in the cloud so it's called a multi tenant environment uh, it's a shared uh, uh, system now self management is as you know you're going to pay as you go utility model because for how much you use you're going to pay only for that and it's a self management and basically it's mostly used by the business uh, people and the advantages uh, um, here uh, you have technical buyers that uh, set up all these management uh, servers okay so actually it's uh, there's a disadvantage for it also so here uh, you uh, it's used for the web server or deployments of, so Um, the security and compliance requirement at all okay this is not so necessary so the um, benefits are utility model uh, no contract is required and you have a shared hardware uh, because you can uh, you know cross check on what developments you are creating you can cross check on another person's uh, uh, thing because two three organization is working on the same type of task they can share uh, their uh, ideas and uh, develop new things okay these are some of the benefits that are given by amazon and micro also here i have got a picture of it benefits of public cloud and also the downside that is what are the you know disadvantages like uh, first the benefits let's see it's flexibility because as soon as you click on any services you select you are always given the services uh, immediately scalability as uh, as you grow you can read, uh, you know and uh, reduce the infrastructure as you require so as you are growing and you don't require those things that uh, the some services or some things that they provide the software or anything you can just uh, reduce on its scalability grow and reduce infrastructure as you require and you're going to pay only for the things that you're using accessibility access service anywhere at any time you can access their 
services from any type of computer as long as you uh, you know you have to actually um, have the google account and then access their service if you're using google then uh, uh, resource pooling that is all the resources are being shared by many people as i told you multi tenant that's called local family run hardware and here you see security here and definitely uh, security is not so uh, strong because so many people are using uh, the services at the same place so here you are vulnerable to cyber attacks compared to the private cloud computing you're going to learn about what is private cloud computing so uh, private cloud so here you can see that you can be attacked and there's not much security in this type of public cloud reliability uh, because so many people are using at uh, their services for the same task suppose you have many people doing the same type of task many companies are doing the same type of task then everybody would join into that uh, you know multi tenant uh, uh, public cloud so here what would happen is there would be a lot of traffic and so um resources would be having you would be having an issue if you need some resources you wouldn't be getting it because another uh, person is using it so these are the disadvantages first is uh, security is not very strong and reliability that is due to the amount of traffic access by the public clouds resources would become a issue public cloud now as i told you some of the examples you already uh, know about uh, microsoft azure and i also told you about uh, two things you have learned how do they uh, give you their services uh, that is amazon and uh, microsoft azure and here you have some more google app engine now if they in your book it's given uh, four things are given it's given as google app engine microsoft window azure ibm smart cloud and amazon ec2 but if you uh, compare you need to know the details of it the details are not given in your reader but you can i uh, put on put the details for you here google app engine what first and for all you require a google account to start their service to use their services then you allow the developer to register what you do is when you are uh, you create your own account you can start that is they allow the developer you get 25 free applications to use to develop whatever things that you require so 25 free applications and you get an unlimited number of paid applications and if you want other application apart from the 25 applications free that you're getting you need some more application what happens is you need to pay for those things and it's unlimited how many application you ask for all those applications will be given to you but you have to pay for it again there's another system in this google app engine here uh, it defines usage quotas what is mean of usage quotas here you can get some free applications when you are using some type of uh, thing uh, along with it there is a free application then you have some quota when you are using this thing so this extension to this quotas can be you can request saying yes i require this uh, extra free uh, uh, application and you can use and if anything that is not there on uh, which is payable then you need to pay and for those additional resources so this is about google app engine when they provide you with a cloud public cloud <clears throat> and microsoft windows also as i told you already first it was formally called windows also only now we call it as microsoft windows also it is a public cloud computing platform and here what they do is they have different services their services first thing is computing next one is analytical uh, uh, that is analyzing whatever you're doing storage is there in it and networking is there these are some of the services that they give you compute analytical storage and networking and so uh, the user can pick and choose any of these services and according to their uh, usage that is uh, they scale and your your payments so scale new applications here you can scale new applications also and you can run the existing applications that are already there ibm smart they have image management as you know um ibm is a international business uh, i think machine international business machine is a full form for ibm and they use they are called a smart cloud they have image management here they have a software where you can uh, you know there are many different uh, images it's a image software that is creation of all these graphical things they have storage 
they have network security. I'm not going to read the details about it, but the highlights, because you know already what's the meaning of storage options. Here you have a second storage tire that is namely another uh, different storage to store all your images. Then you have net network security that is very good and high availability and redundancy. So anything that you ask for, you get, you get it. Mm. And it's mostly useful for uh, business. Okay, and uh, IBM Cloud offers most open and secure public cloud for business. Okay, with the next generation hybrid cloud platform, you'll be learning what is hybrid platform. They are giving you an advanced technology uh, in this public cloud with a hybrid cloud platform. Okay, and uh, other things also are there. You can just go through it. And Amazon EC2 is your uh, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. And it's a web service. It provides you with security, resizability, compute capabilities. Okay, it's designed basically for web scaling. And uh, so it's very easy for the developers to design all these uh, web equipments. Let's see the next public cloud. Yeah, put a picture here how this person's business, Jane's business. And there are so many Jenny's business and they all, how they are using, it's a multi-tenant, how they use it. You can go through these points which are being explained here. Mm. Let's see the private uh, computing. Private, the word private only tells you it's a private thing. It's like your uh, on-premises. You learned about on-premises, right? When we learned about cloud and on-premises. On-premises was only for a particular organization, right? So it's something like that. Private cloud hosting is a single tenant environment. So here the hardware storage, the network, all is dedicated only to a single client or to that only the total organization. of It cannot expand to others like Jenny, Jane, which you had before. No, two, three organizations, they don't share anything. It's only for a single organization or for a single client. Now you see a more, it's a more common type of a private cloud computing. And what is it that they, the solution is first virtual uh, private cloud hosting. You don't have it uh, like multi-tenant, it's private. Uh, a multi-tenant environment, You, but being a private, you can also check the uh, other person's uh, information. It's also a multi-tenant environment, but they cannot check your uh, thing. Where companies achieve networking isolation, they have isolation, but you can, while keeping costs down by buying hardware slices with other tenants and creating private subnets. So you can uh, share their resources, and but you will not allow them to, uh, you know, get into your uh, private cloud hosting where you are developing your own things. But you can share and buy their hardware uh, with other tenants. That makes it easier. Now, if you see what's the advantages here, you have high security. As I told you, it's an on-premise or a private data center. Then you need to maintain and monitor everything because it's private. It's not like the uh, vendors do all this work for you. You need to uh, monitor everything. Then private cloud computing also has a number of benefits. Let's see what are the benefits. First thing, as I told you, security. I told you just now only in this uh, step. First one is high security online premises. It's a private uh, uh, thing which is you know maintained uh, privately, which no one can access. So here, security because private cloud computing are dedicated to single organization. The hardware, the data storage, and network can be designed and assured. They have high levels of security that cannot be accessed by other clients who are using the same data center. Clear, customizable. So hardware performance, network performance, and storage performance, they are specified and customized. That is, they can be modified, modified to suit the task um, in the private uh, cloud. You can do modifications, unlike the other computing. Here are some examples of the private cloud. Uh, Eucalyptus, Ubuntu, uh, Amazon uh, VPC, that is virtual private cloud, VMware, uh, cloud infrastructure, Microsoft ECI data center. These are some of the uh, private cloud centers. You can go on the net and check what uh, works there, like how I picked up from here, here for you, even in your uh, reader, it's only given, the headings are given, but you can compare their services. So also in the private cloud, you please compare all these different services. 
looking at the difference between a private cloud and a public cloud, let's see what is it like. A public cloud, better allocations of resources. Here also you have better allocation of resources, flexibility of environment, flexibility of environment, low capital expenditure, that is no upfront uh, cost here. Your own data center can be uh, repurposed. Okay, you can just make your own changes. As I told you just now, when we read it, what we read it as, uh, your performance here, what you can say, modify to suit your tasks. That's what you can do. And uh, easier and automatic upgrading can be done in public. Uh, complete control over your system and facilities, as I already told you. Massive scaling, accredited uh, accredit, uh, security standards. That it's not very good standard. But here, the big problem with private cloud is you are still limited to your own hardware. OK, sometimes you cannot access everything. I'll teach you about hybrid in the next uh, class. I'll stop you. Hope you understood about public and private clouds. Um, go through it once again so that the lesson becomes easier. Thank you for now, children. Have a nice day. Stay safe and do all your homework.